been given in compliance with the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act by providing notice to all municipal and county parks within the county's area and to the Secretary of State on December 23, 2015, and to the Commission's officially designated newspapers on December 23, 2015, and by posting a copy on the Bulletin Board of the Commission's office. Thank you. Uh, vote. Commissioner Ashman? Here. Commissioner Avery? Here. Commissioner Barr? Here. Commissioner Brown? Here. Commissioner Chila? Here. Commissioner Cabello? Here. Commissioner Galetta? Here. Commissioner Janro? Here. Commissioner Lloyd? Commissioner Lovebauer? Here. Commissioner Lynching? Here. Commissioner Cricket? Here. Commissioner Quinn? Here. Commissioner Brown Green? Here. Here. That's right for the opinion. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. The first order is the adoption of the minutes of May 12, 2016. We have a motion. Second.
next um, PMB meeting, which is June 21st, and then at the July commission meeting, we'll bring the full budget to the commission and we'll go over all, all parts of the budget. Then um, we met with um, Commissioner DiBello and another gentleman, Pat Mangan, from the National Park Service. We are the national, international UNESCO Biosphere, Man and Biosphere program has been undergoing a sort of periodic review. This is an international um, program, and I think the United States is perhaps not uh, stepping up as much as some of the other countries have, and the Department of State got involved, and you may remember um, Paul Aiken and some home from staff, but most of all, a huge submittal to them a while ago to do a renewal and, and get our status updated along with the rest of the um, the entire country, nobody got it. Like everybody. Every national park, everybody. Well, part of the reason is because they sent us forms. It's just a whole intergovernmental thing. So now there's a renewed effort. So Commissioner Develop came with the Southern Kaya, and now we're back in um, working on this periodic update, which is massive. Massive. It requires an enormous amount of work from us. We're working very hard. Pulling is coordinating it. Everybody's got a piece of it. The questions are intense and sometimes a little crazy because it's international. Um, so a lot of the questions pertain to things that have nothing to do with us. Um, but we're working hard on it and we're working with, with, with Joe. Um, there is a meeting being held in Colorado in August where they're going to be helping um, biospheres like ours with their applications. National Park Service has generously done a fund both the travel and everything else to do with it, so hopefully we'll be able to get it approved. Um, and I, at this point, Joel Mott will be going, because we're not all the right hand go, but, um, so that would be very helpful. But this is going to take a lot of our time over the next couple of months, and a lot of things. So we're, we're going to work as hard as we can and try to get in. Um, I don't know, Joe, if you have anything else to say, but the, the guy who came with you was very impressed with, with some things we did, in particular the fact that we do this economic review every year because they're very interested in that. And coincidentally, Joe Sasson will be doing this this year's report today. So I thought he was happy to do this in general. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's uh, something that's really worthwhile for the uh, Pinelands National Reserve to maintain and keep up their status, and their international recognition is what this is. And uh, they're about I, I'm, I'm just going to say off the top of my head about 10 national parks that also qualify for this kind of thing, of which the Pinelands is going to be one of. So the Park Service is being pretty aggressive about actually assigning people to help out, work through with the, uh, the UN uh, organization that's shepherding this thing through. So I think it's worthwhile investment of time and effort. I know it may be a lot. It is a little bit confusing and in some ways there are a bunch of uh, little glitches but I think that uh, we are certainly, we in the Park Service are certainly interested in uh, working with them, trying to bring it through and I think it's also great that the Pinelands is being recognized as and treated just like all the other national parks which is a good thing I think it'll get some help and exposure. I think then the uh, long term economic uh, an environmental monitoring program was a huge asset, something that was actually very much impressed a lot of the professional community that deals with these things internationally, because they really want to take a close look at this management model. So, anyway, okay. and then we'll, be happy, we'll be happy then you. to take it on the road and go visit all of those. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And we'll be happy to see if we can help pay for that. <laughs> benefit of being in the uh, UN Bioreserve um, uh, system. Um, is, is there, are there studies as to how many people come here to see? I, I know over the years I know people have come from different parts of the world to see the planes and, and the pine lands. Um, but are there any ongoing studies or more current studies showing how this this designation benefits benefits New Jersey, benefits the Commission, benefits the Pinelands? I, I suspect not. You know, but it's something that's definitely worth taking a look at at some point in time. I mean, it's great to look at that. I remember seeing in the paper when it was it was first designated, and I was like, wow, that's pretty neat. But, you know, it's nice to know maybe some other way that a designation like that benefits. 
Yeah, the anti fiscally results of the uh, economic and long term, you know, uh, on the term program may be something that as we think about the future, uh, maybe that could be something we might be able to incorporate or measure as part of the program that's going on here. Yeah, you know, each of the national parks, it's the, the, the traditional national parks, of course, you know, you have a gate, you can count the number of people that come through and where they're from and do surveys and things like that. So you can amass some pretty good statistics and stuff in that part, but it's a little more difficult as you can imagine, uh, you know, with the Monuments National Reserve. So, but it's something that, that is definitely worth taking a look at. I mean, uh, you know, and for national parks, you can pretty much say, really the economic impacts that occur in New Jersey. We even have that number for national parks in New Jersey. Uh, the amount of jobs, the economic generation that occurs, where people come from, uh, those kinds of uh, numbers are available. But for the reserve, because of the uh, you know, dispersed nature of all the visitor centers, entry and exit points, it's a little harder to do. Now, what if the UN would have something to say? Has thought about that or has done some work on their own? Well, it's something we'll, we can take a look at when, when the guys go out. That'd be correct. I can tell you one thing is going to happen, and that is that for a long time we were being accused that it was going to bring big black helicopters to take us all away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we got past that. My question is, is there any uh, paperwork or anything on this process that are going through? Yes. Is there, is there anything that describes the process? Well, there's the questionnaire. There's correspondence I have from the National Park Service. Would you like to see it? Yeah, I'd love to see the questionnaire. Okay, we're happy to send it to you. Thank you. <laughs> I like yes. questionnaires. <laughs> Maybe you can answer some of the questions. Oh, I'd be happy to provide you with the questions. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll enjoy it. That's uh, nice time. It will be my first <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to also update um, on the uh, work we've been doing on the Wharton sites that we had, both from PPA and our own, and um, Commissioner Cricket. We got them all on our map. Um, the next step for us, which is it's like a little bit more labor intensive, is that we now have to take them and put them on aerial photographs so we can determine their ex actual extent. Lots of what we have are just dots. So we need to know how big they are, exactly where they are. So we just sort of group them into habitat, uplands, wetlands, um, on water, off water, ponds. Some of them are just on roads. So um, we discussed it yesterday, and we can going back and forth on how the best way to do it. And, and now we have that forward as to where the resource is best spent. So, um, sorry. <laughs> My time is clear. <laughs>
thoughts on this subject. Uh, a few weeks back, I, I supplied a, a map that I thought might be useful in this instance as a, as a base for this effort that we're doing in trying to map the the state forest, in that it was prepared by USGS. It was four different quadrants of board and state forest that were stitched together. The quadrants were made uh, around 1980, uh, some prior to 1980, one or two after 1980. But uh, together, they represent, as best I can see, uh, a map of the condition of Wharton State Forest at the time we were charged uh, with the protection of preservation forests. So, uh, if the staff received that, we'll be able to find that a useful piece. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, the other thing I wanted to ask was uh, in, in my uh, packet of materials, I received a letter from a member of the public that I'd like as a staff could be scanned and perhaps shared with all the other well, commissioners. Oh, you do have it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It was, all right. It was addressed. I, I thought it was just in the other day. Glad you have it. Thank you. I'd like to uh, just to work for talking about this. Uh, I went through my files and uh, I found one of the first um, uh, research projects uh, mapping uh, the vegetation of the pine land. I'm sure we're all familiar with this book. 1973, Jack wow. Thornick, um, one of the first three um, booklets that were produced um, uh, identifying the, mm -hmm. the unique species in the highlands and also the habitat. So I'd be glad to share this with staff if they, if they haven't seen it already. We, we, we have, have it. Have that? Yeah, I have it. Great. 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 But I mean, it goes back to 1973. So uh, it's amazing the work that's been done.
county and the municipalities have made a determination that it's a public safety hazard uh, that we would defer to the counties and the municipalities. So we will be talking to, to concerned parties over the next month. The second item I just wanted to mention, a, a generic issue. Um, mining applications are, are presenting a challenge to the commission staff um, for a number of reasons. We seem to have reached the point where many of the mines are proposing to expand into undis undisturbed areas on their parcels. In prior years, most mining applications, not all, but most, uh, we're, we're working in areas that had previously been cleared, but not mined. And some of the mining applications are in, in the forest and preservation area of the pinelands, uh, the, the more undeveloped areas, and the threatened and endangered species standard uh, is posing a problem because we're dealing with typically large parcels, acreages, hundreds and hundreds of acres, up to five to 6,000 acre parcels where applicants are mining. Uh, typically what is a small portion of that parcel and how to address the threatened and endangered species standard, uh, particularly for threatened and endangered snake species, is it, becoming quite complex. Uh, for example, how much of the parcel needs to be surveyed if a, if a mine application is proposing to mine 25 acres over the next five years and the parcel is 1,000 acres, what portion of the parcel needs surveyed for threatened and endangered species. We are working our way through the issue, but I just kind of wanted to alert the commissioners to that potential uh, issue that, that is in fact out there. One of the things that we've been attempting to do is develop something we refer to as habitat conservation plans, uh, as opposed to doing the intensive uh, threatened and endangered species surveys that take multiple seasons had some success with that, but it continues to present a challenge for the staff and the applicants for that matter. The last thing I wanted to mention was we do have now an application from Burlington County on Taunton Road. Taunton Road uh, is the road that provides most of the access, if not all of the access to King's Grant. It's a relatively narrow county road with two lanes without shoulders with weapons uh, that line the road on both sides for the entire length road. Uh, it's presented challenges for the county and for the commission staff to deal with stormwater management and weapons protection. We think we're making our way through the process. The county has represented that it's a public safety hazard because roads, uh, excuse me, cars cannot get off to the side of the road uh, for any number of reasons. Um, we are in the process of reviewing that. That application has been on and off again with the commission for a long time. Those are that's in my report. Questions? Yeah. How many expansions on the mining do you have? At, at the present time, uh, just uh, roughly, you know, uh, dozens or, or no, there aren't that many. <laughs> at, at the present time, we have about six or seven. Uh, there aren't that many mines, relatively speaking. In Are the they most of them in the forest area? Or the forest area? and preservation. Thank you. You're welcome. I guess my question would be, you said you're working your way through the mining issue, uh, right in the day of the How are you, how are you doing this? Today, what we're, what we're requiring <coughs> are threatened and endangered species surveys, uh, but from what we're having to do is determine uh, what portions of the parcel are subject to the to those uh, threatened and endangered species surveys in combination with applicants proposing to preserve portions of the parcel. Maybe an example would be a little bit clearer. Um, if, if someone is proposing to do a 25 acre mine expansion on a 300 acre parcel, uh, once we do the limited threatened and endangered species surveys and attempt to identify whether the area proposed to be mined is what we would refer to as critical habitat for, for the pine snakes uh, or any other threatened endangered species in the state. Uh, what we're doing is allowing mining in those areas and applicants are typically proposing uh, to conserve other portions of the property. The, the real issue, and I think probably most commissioners are aware of this, is the snakes are there uh, in most of these more remote areas. 
there are the species there. So doing the threat and endangered species survey to determine whether those species are there or not uh, doesn't yield a lot of information. We know that. Uh, so the question is, under your regulations, is a critical habitat. Typically the staff looks at getting and nesting locations and the frequency of encounters <coughs> of the species uh, to determine what is and is not critical habitat. Does that help, Commissioner? Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to know exactly how you were going through, you know, what was Sure, the preliminary information I won't talk or don't be aware of that, or is that simply just leaving the two lane highway and trying to wide the shoulder for public safety? Yes. And how wide do they want to make the shoulder? 10 foot? They want to make them uniform, I believe. It's either 8 or 10. 8 or 10 foot. Sure. Okay, there's not much room there to do it all. Any other questions for Chuck? Okay, I'm just I'm curious to follow up on Ed's question. Um, how, would, how would that, do you have any? How would that be done? I mean, would they call for, for like you put in in, in the dip in the swale on the side of the road, the top road? Um, or, and maybe it's premature to ask that question right now, but I mean, how, how would you add another shoulder on both sides of the road? Fill it in? Or? Well, there is a minimal shoulder there now, but yes, fill would be placed. Uh, I'm familiar with that road, so I can kind of. It's very constrained site. Yeah. All right, thanks. But your question on the bridge situation, and um, I appreciate you all back to the briefing re re in the 25 year history here. But it seemed to be very clear that it was not just permitted, it was encouraged to have public access to the fish there. So, I mean, I get the fact that you can hang your hat on public safety right here, chief of police, or county sheriff, or wherever their law enforcement officers can do that. But there needs to be a way that we can. Uh, Try to look into with them having to improve the public safety. Is it parking that's the issue? Are they worried about someone getting hit? Has there been a history of accidents there? Um, is there anything that they can give us other than just saying it's public safety? I spoke to the county engineer. Um, <coughs> is the, is the, yeah, this goes back away, so everybody's you know being files to try to find things out. So, I mean, that's that's the next step for us is to find out exactly what the safety issue was and then see if there's any room to be here. Yeah, and and is there, has there been a history of incidents? I mean, there was a history of, at a minimum, vandalism, bad, bad actors, people acting up, things like that. It's always got right now, but we're going to go back to the town. County's not going to go back to the town, so I'm going to follow up and see what we can find out. No questions from the reports. All right, moving forward, we have two public development projects. Revolution here, one in Venice Township, one in Monroe Township. Do we have a motion? So we Do we need any explanation on these? Nancy, do you have any explanation or comments on this? Not unless there's a question. Any uh, questions or comments on this resolution? I'll just ask one question, uh, maybe a description of the library building um, in the uh, second application. Is that the building we saw once over here? Yeah, yeah same application. So, um, is that a brick building or? I don't have the answer to that question, but I, did, I do have a picture of it, I just don't recall. Do you have a picture of that? I went on Google Earth and tried to locate it. It, it is a white stucco building. Okay. okay. Any other comments? Okay. Okay.
That makes me feel a little bit. We're passing this around. Are there any other questions on this resolution? Yes. I'll wait for the picture to make it around the vote here. Uh, all in favor of this resolution? Aye.
might show up, you know, a thousand home sales, but maybe seventy percent of those are outside the Pinelands area. But because of the nature in which we're able to get that data, we have to include it for the entire Pinelands uh, municipal statistics. So we try to get these variables at a sub municipal level that were that are more easily uh, broken down. Uh, we have twenty one variables total. Uh, this year we have updated eighteen of them. We have data available for 18 for the field date. Uh, of the seven variables that we're now able to split, the census population, that's something we get from the U.S. Census Bureau every 10 years at the block level. Uh, median age and the per capita income is still at the block level from ESRI. Um, home sales data we get from the division of taxation. Uh, and that's basically block and block, which is very convenient. Very production since everything's happening Inside the Pinelands area, as far as berry production is concerned, we consider that a, split, uh, a, very, a variable that we have just Pinelands statistics for. And new this year, as I mentioned before, is the average property tax bill. Um, one thing to keep in mind, though, too, is that several of the variables will always be unsplittable. For example, tax rates. It doesn't matter what part of the township you're living in, it's going to be the same tax rate regardless. So, getting into the meat of our uh, Data here. Our, fir our first data, we'll, our first variable we'll look at is the 2014 population um, estimates. Uh, the Pinelands and the state each had a, a little bit less than one percent. Uh, the non-Pinelands saw a slight decline, which is unusual, but it's very low, a little bit, you know, actually less than 0.1 percent. Um, poverty rate, as I mentioned before, is our supplemental variable for this year. Uh, the poverty data used to be collected as part of the uh, decennial census done by the U.S. Census Bureau every 10 years. Um, ever since the 2010 census, they moved that to what's called the American Community Survey. The American Community Survey is conducted every year with much smaller sample sizes. Um, so it has a little bit of higher margin of error, but it's still good data when it's aggregated, uh, like we do for our purposes. Um, the Pinelands area, where the Pinelands municipalities have a poverty rate in 2014 of about 8%. The non-Pinelands about 12%, and the state at about 11%. It's been increasing since the since at least the 2000 census, um, with the Pinelands having the greatest increase in that rate over that time. Moving into real estate. Uh, the real estate market in the Pinelands is still pretty shaky, but it is continuing to improve. Uh, there are about 1,300 1, permits were issued for a single family home construction in the Pinelands, uh, and at an average about 28 permits per municipality. This is slightly down from last year, about 11%, um, while the nine Pinelands in the state both saw positive growth in that sector. Um, but it's not all bad news. We did have some, with the Pinelands uh, area, this, I'm sorry, let me back a little bit. This is one of our one of our variables that we're able to split out, um, so that we just were able to kind of for just the Pinelands area. We did see positive growth in Pinelands sales. Uh, Pinelands sales were about eighteen thousand for eighteen hundred, uh, and that's up twenty three percent from last year versus the non Pinelands, which were up seventeen percent, and the state up fifteen percent. So that's that's encouraging. Um, Pinelands average price was down to. Uh, $227,000, uh, it's down 2%. The non-finals were down to 303, they were down by about 1.5%. The state actually saw a slight increase by half a percent, so that's encouraging as well because that will eventually work our way, work its way down to us. Uh, because, this, just because we get this at uh, such a fine level of detail, we're actually able to break it down into, break it out into Pinelands management, Pinelands management areas. Uh, most of Pinelands area sales occurred inside the RGA, um, with the highest average prices occurring in the Pinelands preservation area. Um, as with last year's management areas, or as with last year's report, the management area average prices were higher inside the Pinelands area than their counterparts in the PNR, with the exception being uh, Pinelands Town. And that is also a trend. Uh, just a quick comparison from, uh, to what actually happened from last year in each management area. Uh, the biggest, some of the biggest changes were the agricultural production area saw a decrease in average 
average prices, but we are seeing average prices increasing in the, you know, some of our growth areas. In the economic uh, indicator portion of the report, uh, per capita income is another one that we're able to get the final level of detail to almost islands area because law groups are not perfectly aligned with our area. There is some that we're missing out on or we're counting that we should that we really shouldn't be. Uh, the finance per capita income in 2014 was about $30,100, down 1% from the last time we reported on this in 2012. Uh, the non finance had a 3% decline, while the state actually saw a 2% increase. So again, encouraging our economy and recovery. The north, northern half of the state is a lot stronger than the uh, full state can be considered for us. Unemployment, uh, this is great news. We are continuing to see our rate decline. Uh, in 2013, our rate was about um, 9.7, so we're down 1.7 points to 8%. The non pounds in the state were also down, but we did have the largest gain, or the largest decrease, which is nice. Continuing the good employment news, um, our employment levels have increased. More, more so than the state overall and the non pilots But even more importantly, we're actually, yeah, as of 2014, 99% um, of the of our 2007 recession levels. Uh, the non pilots in the state can't say that. I don't know what exactly those were, but they are further behind than we are as far as the recovery is concerned. Uh, establishments, which are essentially businesses, will be further. Uh, Pinewoods were up about 2%, two or so all 2% increase, while the non pinewoods in the state saw a 1% increase. Wages are still on a downward trend, and that's largely because you're going to see uh, surpluses in the labor force, you know, with the high, uh, still say high unemployment rates. The retail sales and establishments, that is one variable that is only, a, only able to be updated every five years. Uh, it's collected as part of the Economic census. Um, so, from some 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 of the changes from 2007 to 2012 was that there was a 10 percent decline in pilots per capita sales um, to about 11,700 dollars, versus a 9 percent decline in non pilots per capita sales, which is about 15,400 dollars, and a 5 percent decline for the state overall, which is about 15,000 at the county level, because we don't get a lot of, um, I'm sorry, let me, forgot to mention a key point here. The economic census used what's called economic places. An economic place um, differs from a municipality in the sense that to be considered an economic place, the municipality needs to have a population of at least 2,500 people and 2,500 jobs. Um, so of our 47 municipalities in the Pinewood area, or the make up the lines of municipalities, only 35 are considered to be an economic place. So that's what those, that 10%, 9%, and 5% decline are reflected of. Um, within our counties, there was 14% decline in Atlanta County for capital sales. That was the greatest decline for Southern Jersey. Uh, within 1% decline in Cumberland County for capital sales. That was the greatest decline for Southern Jersey. Within 1% decline in Camden County being the latest, at least the smallest decline. Uh, in Burlington and Cape May, they both saw a 10% decline in establishments. So that was the greatest. And it, in Gloucester, there was a 4% decline, you know, at least. Um, moving to the world of final agriculture, grant rate prices fell by a penny to 37 cents per pound in 2014. That's down uh, 3% from 2013. Blueberry prices rebounded a bit from their fall last year, or from 2013. Uh, fall increasing from $1.20 per pound to $1.40 per pound. That's an increase of 17%. And that's, the, the lower prices are still largely a result of oversupply, especially cranberries in the international market. Uh, into our final category of municipal finance. Um, as everyone, I'm sure, every taxpayer is aware, the tax rates continue to increase uh, in 2014. As a result, all our average, uh, all our tax, all our property tax bills increase as well. Uh, the pilots and the, the state saw an increase of less than a percent, while the non pilots saw an increase of about a percent. Um, oh, this is uh, this is the category that we also were able to add. Um, 
some visible data for it. Um, you only have one year's worth of data, so it's not incredibly exciting. I can't talk about trends or anything like that. But the average price I was able to calculate for specifically for the Pinelands area based on um, property tax data or property data in general was uh, $5,585. So it's somewhat in line with what, with what we're going to report. So it indicates to me that they, within the Pinelands municipalities but outside our boundary, there are some. Um, Houses, there are some properties that are for residential units that are value lower than those of the inside of the complex. But the next year, the table will be more exciting. And for our last variable, um, state utilized valuations are still still on a bit of a decline, uh, but they are, but they are, their rate of decline is now de decreasing as well, so it's falling a little more slowly. But the final was falling at 3% in 2014, the non final was down to 4%, and the state down to 1%. So that concludes our variables. I know it's a little tough to see, but in the back of the report, it should be able to get a good view. Nice views, beautiful maps. Um, so don't forget to check out the, the updated municipal factbook. We did include the poverty rate data, it's from the supplemental variable, uh, as a graph in the lower right corner. So what's the next? What's in store for next year's report? Well, we are going to be initiating a program review. We're continuing the program review. Uh, we're going to discuss with the experts how to improve the, uh, how to possibly improve the process of uh, how we collect and report on the data. Uh, we're hoping to have a revised uh, reporting format so we no longer have this overwhelming 160-page reporting format. Bring it down to something a little more digestible and easier to read. And finally, time committee, uh, we're going to include some uh, hopefully new supplemental data and even more importantly, trying to continue to break down some of that, some of the down uh, variables that we're looking for. So that concludes the report. If there's any questions, I'll be happy to take. Uh, looking quickly at, at particularly the housing information, it's dramatic what's happened in the Atlantic City area, mm -hmm. Hamilton, Galloway, Atlantic Harbor. Hamilton's issued a couple of three, the last three years that we have data, they've issued less than 20 building permits. And I'm wondering if the transactions, the, the lack of real estate transactions, reflect the fact that either nobody has any money or nobody can sell a house in those communities because of the casinos. And whether you see like a pocket of, of bad economic data bringing down the overall pine lands right. uh, numbers or not. Uh, also, I, I can't say I've seen it yet, but I imagine if this is still 2014 data, when we get to 2015, which is you know, through some memory, I imagine that we will be seeing there. Do you track, because I, I believe it's still available, is casino employment by municipality and county? No, I believe that may have been a supplemental variable in the past, but it's not something we have to really track. like to suggest that as you start looking at new ways of reporting that you make sure that we can trace it back over time so that the variables don't take us off into the left field. Okay. Um. I think it's important that the history of this reporting has been very <coughs> important uh, therefore, we can't lose the frame of thought. Oh, uh, absolutely, absolutely. No, it's gonna. It's more going to be. Um, when I say revised reporting format, I'm uh, taking this report and shrinking it down to something that's easier to read. Just don't try to shrink it too far. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. I just like to compliment you. Know, this is a terrific format. Very easy to follow. Uh, I appreciate the <coughs> data trying to split out the data we well can. The ESRI uh, data is very easily splitable as you can do to your graphic uh, polygons and stuff like that data. I appreciate the fact that you have trouble now as good as accurately as possible. Thank you. I agree. Thank you. I'm just thumbing through the back here with all the, you know, the snapshots of the different towns and, and, and counties. Great, great job. Um, Thank you very much. A question on the report. I probably asked 
this every year, but um, these go out, at least an email goes out to all the municipalities, um, making them aware of, um, uh, of the release of the annual report. Um, certainly they should be aware of, finance municipalities should be aware of this. Um, I all too frequently hear about how the finance is a, is a burden to many communities where this really shows that it's not the Planning Commission actually. The work that we do here uh, makes uh, South Jersey a more livable and more uh, economically reasonable place to live. Yes, yeah. we're going to be distributing to, um, to uh, a few libraries that are listed up front there. Um, but we're going to be distributing to the, to the few libraries and then we also make presentation to the Planning Commission Council over here as well. You know, that, you know, that doesn't reach out far enough, I don't think. Okay. I think every municipality in the Pineland should get an email that's you know, the mayors, the planning boards, um, the planners, many people with boxes aware of the most of the law. Absolutely, that's a good You probably already do it. Um, in any case, I just think it, 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 it's something that needs to be done. And one of the issues is making sure the right people get the report in on this. Maybe there should be some PR, like, you know, a virtual, like, like, well, we have the virtual. We have the virtual. Is this, could this be uh, somehow, you know, I know there's a lot of these virtuals. Um, what's being done to disseminate them? Uh, that's probably another question. We're going to be disseminating them soon. We send out an email. Get it out there. Okay, I mean, there's a great map in here. It's beautiful. Virtual, so. Uh, I'd love to see every municipality in the finance have these in their four years. I'd like to extend the initial council meeting. I put them on the table when I came around there with comments, so that was yeah. good. But, but again, how many how many municipalities were there that night? I mean, we have 50 songs that are in the finance, and we're maybe talking about. Well, we gave them 12 or so. Yeah, we gave them a little bit of information on the last meeting. Yeah. 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 Send them to the clerk for the official record keeper. If I can also add, I think each county has an economic development office. They should go ahead and answer this as well. Okay. Okay. So just send them to the municipal clerk. Yeah. 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 And I noticed too that we do have a link to the website to let them know that the full report is available on our website. So, so this for sure is really an ideal way. Well, most of us represent different municipalities, most commissioners here, so we could do our job and take a pile of these to drop them off at our municipal office there. So, so watch for yourself. Bob, <laughs> give me directions to your ministry. <laughs> <laughs> all right, any other comments for Joe? <clears throat> yeah, great job. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you Joe. All right, uh, general public comment. Uh, this is where you have the opportunity to step to the mic. Let's comment on anything in <coughs> Pinelands. And we, we uh, request you comments for around three minutes. I think you probably have a sign in list.
They tow each other out, spin them in reverse. That's legal. And, and the road turns into a complete shambles. And they say, you know, the taxpayers should fix it. So uh, it's just wrong. Uh, the, most of the roadway is under one to three feet of water. It's really made for, for vehicles that are going out there just to have, just to, to challenge their, their, their vehicles to see what they can do. And they know that there's no police out there, and that's why you have lawlessness. It's, it's no mystery why it's the wild, wild west. Because the police can't get out there, but other vehicles can. And that, I mean, that's insane. I, I see, uh, see jeep tracks going straight out through through swamp. It, it's just not right. I hope you'll do something about it. Thank you. Jason Hell. Hi everyone. Jason Hell, Finance Preservation Alliance. Uh, I can I can just confirm what, what Mike said. Uh, Cherry Hill Road specifically is uh, an area where I, I filmed Pine Barren Street Frogs in, in in wetlands ponds off of what the trail was or the road uh, where the jeeps have driven around in circles and there's one or two frogs that still you know hang out there and, and croak during the breeding season. Um, now all the environmentally sensitive areas that the DEP designated right now all of them have tracks going straight through them, those that haven't been physically protected. So putting a sign up on these sensitive areas, I would, I would um, compare it to if a historic preservationist put a sign up on a leaky roof telling the rain not to come in. It's just, it's just not effective. Um, so when you do consider the map, just please remember that we'll need physical protections as, as well to the most sensitive areas. Um, I just want to relate a story. On, on May 14th, I was out in Morton State Forest, um, and I saw three Jeeps and one truck stop before a puddle, uh, a large puddle in the road by Cranberry Bog. Uh, and this is a highly traveled road, one that's really important for transportation within the state forest. And an individual got out of the first Jeep with a camera on hand. All the other trucks stopped. He walked around to, the, to this other side of the puddle, and I knew exactly what he was up to. They were making, uh, they were making themselves a video. So I just recorded them do this, and you see the Jeep, the big spray, and you see the individual with the camera go and back, get back in the, the car. So I reported this to the park police that there were individuals going out destroying road infrastructure. Um, I, I got my incident ID number, 5843. I had license plates, descriptions of individuals, and uh, I had the highest basically the highest burden of proof that I could provide, I had. I called back the DEP two days later, and I asked what, what happened. And they said they were issued a, a verbal warning. Now, I had more information at this point because I went on YouTube and I saw the video that they were making, they uploaded. They had driven into the Basto River, uh, destroyed a bank of the Mullica River in multiple environmentally sensitive areas. And I said, hey, I have this video that these people themselves made, their faces, their license plates, their trucks. They're there in plain, in plain view for all the public to see. I have it, I downloaded it. How can I provide this to you? Um, and they had no way to do that. So later, I flagged down a park police officer. I said, hey, officer, you know, I have my incident ID number, 5843. They were issued a verbal warning, but they were committing some of the worst environmental crimes. How can we get this evidence to you so you can go after them? And he took my car and said, I get a call back. Well, a week passed by, I got no call. So I flagged him down again. I see, see these guys pretty often. I say, hey, what's, what's going on? Here's my card again. You know, please let me know I have this evidence. And he says the sergeant wasn't interested. He said, maybe I'll talk to a detective now. So now it's going on three weeks, and I have received no call on how to get these people prosecuted. So, you know, it's just a frustrating situation where I have the highest burden of proof against these individuals, yet I can't get any action taken. And I just wonder what that means to an average citizen and how frustrating that must be to try and get this problem solved where the DEP just seems not interested. So I just think it's so important for you to really take this issue seriously, and I, and I thank you for looking into it at this point. And, uh, 
and support you all. Thank you very much. That's all I have on the list for folks who checked off to comment. Are there any others? Okay. I, I really, the Arnold Fishman Medford Lakes, I really have uh, just a couple of questions. Can, can somebody tell me what is being mined in the Pinelands? Sand. Thank you. Uh, has has the Pinelands Commission filed its brief in the appellate division with respect to the South Jersey gas uh, pipeline? Um, yes, uh, joint brief on behalf of Pinelands and BPU was filed yesterday. Joint brief on behalf of the Pinelands Commission and the Ford Public Utilities. The BPU yes. was filed yesterday. Yes. Uh, is that? online? Is that something I can uh, get? That's a good question. I don't know what the appellate division publishes online. It's a matter of public record. I just don't know. Could it be made part of the Pine Lands Commission website? Could it be posted there? Is that? It's 64 pages long, just for your consideration. Uh, I just don't know what you, appellate division, how you get to the appellate division records, but it is a public record. And uh, do we have a date for oral argument? No, we do not. Uh, can that be made known to the public so those who would want to attend could do so? Yes, as, as soon as we find out, we'll communicate that to the commission staff so they can let you know at a public meeting. We just don't have any information from the court other than it would be considered early on the fall calendar. Okay. And once again, could the brief be uh, on on uh, on your website so those who are interested could have access to it? I want to ask a question on that. How do we, with situations like this, how do we handle it in the past? Are we typically putting briefs on our website or is that handled as part of a public records request? My past experience has only been here for two years. My past experience is we never had it in our request that we put it on the commission's website. If somebody had wanted a copy, we provide a copy. I, I just I want to make sure we we're you know keeping a, a standard here that we follow. If we're not going to do it on every application moving forward, Mr. Fishman's copy would be able to give it to him. But I, I, I'd be most appreciative if I could have a copy. That, that's fine. I, I, I'm not your email address, I can send it to the board. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Are there any others for public comment? Seeing none, we'll close public comment. Do we have anything for closed session? No. All right. Um, any comments by the commission? Yes. Uh, you know, I'm going to probably talk about the Florida Festival um, coming up the 26th of June. Uh, it's a two-day festival on to uh, five this year. Uh, it's a big event. It's a big event because it's the hundred, the centennial of the cultivation of the blueberry. So, a um, hundred years ago, this year it was Bob um, in uh, it's called the Triangle Field out there. Uh, there were a whole bunch of bushes, and they were all related. Uh, they were related. Their parents were uh, the Brooks and um, the soy. The soy was down here in Hamilton Township, that Karen bush. And so in Washington, D.C., they cross-pollinated those two bushes, and um, all the little seeds that were produced in the fruit were germinated, 3,000 of them, and they were planted out of like five, so, um, these little, little plants. And uh, about three, four years later, those bushes were big enough to produce a lot of fruit. And instead of letting it go to waste, uh, they sold, they, they collected all those birds and they sold them. And so cultivation really means the improvement and knowing how to grow bushes. And that's what we're celebrating this year, that we were able to, Red Fox was able to improve the blueberry. So uh, the birds are big, blue, tasty, um, and easy to pick, full of red on the bush. Um, 
1916, as I said, there were some 4,000 bushes out of White's Bog. Elizabeth White and Frederick Colville sorted through all those bushes, well, 4,000. I want to evaluate them for the things I just talked about, as well as some other characteristics, the color of the face, the size, whether they, they cluster or not, the birds cluster or not. Now, those 4,000 bushes, they found two. Uh, the Pioneer and the uh, Catherine, Catherine named after Colville's um, daughter. And by the way, um, Colville's son uh, lived across the street, Stanley. I uh, lived in the brick house across the street, and he worked down the street at the Blueberry Co-op for, for most of his life. So Colville, even though we don't know too much about them, we know more about the whites who lived here at Fenwick Manor. Um, the Colvilles uh, had a lot to do with the development of Blueberry. But in any case, this is a year when the first pretty good crop, all those berries kind of tasted the same, kind of the same size, but it wasn't until they were able to propagate the uh, Catherine and the uh, Pioneer that the berries coming from, from the bushes that were propagated were very uniform, similar in size, very similar in taste, and you know everybody enjoys them today. So, um, get out, there's a lot of history here in Pemberton Township, a lot of Pinelands history, a lot of finance history in New Elizabeth, as well as uh, Brownfields and White's Bog. Um, something that we should all cherish and all find out more about. And I'd like to invite you all to the Great Festival or to come out to White's Bog uh, whenever you uh, want to enjoy the Pinelands. And uh, I'd be glad to take anybody out there and give them a tour. So uh, I'm a part of that, and it's a part of the DEP. Uh, the commission um, uh, is a nonprofit. Voice by Preservation Trust is a nonprofit uh, that um, implements um, the, the use of White's Bog through the DEP. So we're kind of a branch of the DEP in the semester. So with that, I just, again, thank you for your time and I uh, hope to see you at the Blueberry Festival of 2026. Of this month? Of this month, yes. And, and I might add, we're a long window today. Um, the day before yesterday, White Spot uh, went to Washington, D.C. <coughs> to present um, the cultivation of blueberry uh, to our elected officials. Uh, Congressman uh, MacArthur was there, for Booker uh, Irving. They all were happy to recognize the uh, things that happened here. It's a lot to be proud of. Sure, I just want to uh, thank Richard for putting this together. Great job. Thank you. I just wanted to ask, I know the staff has a lot on their hands already, but possibly if we could assist what Jason Howe was referring to with his situation, support anything that we could do to further push that since sure. they're ignoring you. would be great. I mean, like, whatever these reports we made, I, I sent them up to TEP and see what's going on. You know, I'm much better than that. And,
also wanted to make a comment about that, Mr. Fishman's request. You know, I, I think that you're right to so say we should be looking at our precedent. We don't want to create burdens of work for our staff where we don't have a history uh, of doing that. I would suggest maybe in this case, since this particular uh, situation generated so much interest, pro and con, uh, from the public, it might be the public service for us to, rather than ask people to make individual requests and turn out a copy of the brief and supply it, I would think the easiest thing to do would be to take a PDF file, put it on the website, and say, anyone wants it, here it is, you, know, you can download it. That would make it easily available for us as, as well. I, know I, I have interest in, in seeing the brief, so I would encourage them to consider that. I have a sense if that's a sense of once Mr. Fishman gets it. Everybody will have it. <laughs> 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 and promote with a fantastic history that is this place here and, and White's Bog uh, uh, Farm. And uh, I've been to the Blueberry Festival. I can't recommend it highly enough uh, to all of you uh, here in America. It's just a, a wonderful celebration. And this year will be a two-day uh, celebration, not just one. I urge you to get there early because the, if you wind up uh, showing up an hour after they open, you, want, you get stuck in a line of cars, you know, waiting to get parked. It's a very popular thing for great reasons. So, so thank you, Commissioner, for your good work and, and all you do to make sure that this very important story is told and, and celebrated. You know, I appreciate the recognition, but more importantly, I appreciate the recognition of the work that was done on this spot. So, yeah. Thank you. Any other thoughts? Tell us.